What is this? Dino Day 5, I think. Let's do it. We've got new wastegate lines. We fixed our overboosting issue, which was the problem at last Dino. So now we can do a high boost and a low boost tune. And we can throw duty cycle at it to get better spool and better top end and things like that. So I'm excited. It's not just spring pressure anymore. And it's not just one. We can do like a 12 PSI tune, maybe make 450, 480. I don't know. Then we can do a high PSI tune as much as the fuel lines will let me probably 17, 18 PSI, take it back up from 14. It's a mess though. Driven luck circuit did not treat this thing very well in terms of the dirt. Now the track itself was the most fun we've had in a long time. And we really, really love Koi and the guys, they're good people. But man, I mean, that was a fresh filter prior. That's, that's dusty. So I'll wash that out, show you guys how real quick. Wastegate's good now, by the way. After all my overboosting issues, it turns out that I was missing a plug on the lower side that it had fallen out or backed out. And it wasn't a water port like I thought it was, it was boost. And so it was leaking like four or five PSI out of it. And that was causing me to go from 12 to like 15 or 16 before the spring would actually open. So we threw a plug in it. We've got nice new crimped lines. Actually, I'm really hyped on these lines. <clears throat> We're producing them in the kit. Let me show you. Here we have my old lines and the new ones. It's a great way for me to show you how much better one is than the other. Here is an old fitting, as you can see. I mean, they work really well. Don't get me wrong. It's not like they were leaking like I may have thought, but they're kind of bulky. And it's got a long radius right here and they're kind of thick. Now, if we compare them to a new, look at that. Shorter diameter, a shorter radius in the 90, an overall smaller design in the fitting, higher quality material, a crimp rather than a twist lock, nice sheathing, and I mean these fittings are so high quality feeling. After the dyno, I'll go ahead and get some new, slightly smaller sheathing and uh, cover these just because they do run close to the exhaust and the wastegate, but they are super high temp brake line style and they are totally fine near the exhaust. Not touching, of course, but near. Okay, let's go ahead and get these thrown on. Then we'll get new wheels thrown on it. These big, beautiful 10 and a half, 18s I did with some 265s. A little more grip on the dyno. Then we'll go ahead and take it down, wash it, and get it put on the trailer to get ready to go to Doug's tomorrow morning. We should be there unloading at like 9.45 with a 10 o'clock dyno. So I'm not gonna do anything tomorrow morning. I'll have it on the trailer today and ready. That feels great. This in here. Dusty, man. Look, I love driven luck, don't get me wrong, but dusty i'm gonna clean this up some then we will take our two wastegate lines and hook them back to the boost controller which i'm pretty sure i just hid yep right in there <laughs> okay so it's temporary but it works new lines are on and tight we got the back wheels on we're gonna check oil drop it down and we'll put it on the trailer yes. so nice Heart sore. What up? What up? So yeah, we got the tires on it. We got the new wastegate lines. Uh, we went to warm it up and realized that it has water in it and it's 18 degrees tonight and it's gotta be on a trailer. So Daniel's taking me over to the parts store real quick in a S54 car. makes more torque than Chris's. I hate to say it, but it makes more torque than Chris's. Oh my God. Uh, what diff is it? 338. Oh, nah, it definitely makes more torque than Chris's then. Oh shit, I thought you were gonna say 391. Thanks for your help. Ooh, that thing looks so good. Don't get hit. Good 
morning. We are on the way to the dyno, taking a bit of a back route so we can pass by the ethanol fuel station and fill the car up. Thankfully, we've got that flex fuel sensor now, so we don't have to worry so much about testing it each time. We uh, got air, we've got a few tools. It did rain last night, so we're gonna have to check for water in that sixth coil pack when we get there, and we're gonna really warm it up and give it another bleed. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing fueled up. You know how my anxiety gets when we're doing things like this. So we'll get this thing fueled up. We'll get there, get it idling, and we'll make sure it's nice and happy like 30 minutes before I have to put it on the dyno this time so I'm not stressed about it. All right, we're here. Mind you, when we started this, it was summer. It was like June, July, right before that. July 4th of that. Now, it's fucking January, and it's snowing a little bit. Oh, or like little flurries, dude. Oh, it's so cold. All right, everything's frozen. Let's get unloaded. Get this thing warming up. See if swapping the coolant worked or if it still froze. For reference, I went to push that out of my way, and it's so frozen that it cut my fucking hand on the edge of it. I don't, I don't like the cold. Got both ramps. We are fully unstrapped. Let's do a cold start. Oh fuck, the coldest start I've ever done on ethanol. Come on baby. First pull, saw 12 PSI, which is good. We fixed the issue, but it was a little bit lean. So, there we go. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, let's do some dinos. wasn't making more boost with the added duty cycle we turned the controller to a hundred percent we didn't get any 
but I wired or I plumbed them backwards last night when we put the new lines in so we switched those around real quick so we'll make 12 psi low boost and we'll turn it up until we max the fuel system With a 265 at like 20 psi with like 100 pounds in the trunk. So I'm gonna go get some sandbags from David Campo across the street and I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, uh, so it was spinning, even with that extra 100 pounds, 558 horsepower, 569 wheel torque. Well, that's spinning, so we don't know what it really... It's going to be more than that, okay. that's since it's spinning, it'll, that's all that rear tire would hold. Yeah, well, so that's how much power I make, is how much that 265 holds. We are out of there with like a mostly for a successful dyno day. I mean, the only issue is that that 265 Kenda at 18 PSI didn't make enough grip because it's cold out. So the tire itself only made, uh, let's see, we started spinning at 565 wheel torque, 557 horsepower, which means that we're making close to 600 wheel torque, maybe more, especially uh, Doug thinks it's making like a ton more because of when it started to spin. We had no chance with 200 pounds in the trunk. Look at all this weight in the trunk. I mean, look at that. 50 pound bags and then <laughs> two wheels and tires. My backup saloons and that's still, I mean, blowing them off on high boost. Oh yeah, they're broken in. We just had no chance at all to get traction on high boost and that was 18 psi it made that uh so it's making 600 horsepower or more on 18 psi and on low boost uh so the lowest we could do is 12 and we made 444 wheel torque and 458 horsepower at 12 psi so happy happy Right, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it works! <laughs> guys we did it thank you guys so much for the support thanks for watching thanks for helping really there's been a lot of hands in this thing over the last couple months i mean y'all saw it 30 minutes for y'all it's been eight months working on that starting with shit too small of a fuel pump 
overboosting issues, breaking up issues, four cam sensors, four bad cam sensors in a row. Forgot that one. That was a big deal. The amount of things we fought on this car. And we're not even done yet. I have no idea how much power it made on high boost. 18 PSI was, Doug said, over 600 wheel torque, over 600 horsepower. It blew them off, the dyno, at 18 PSI. We were somewhere in the neighborhood, like 600, 560 is what it shows. And then tire spin. So 564 or 67 or whatever the wheel torque was, that's how much a 265 Kenda can hold at 20 PSI when it's 20 degrees outside and we have 200 pounds on the trunk. So this summer when it warms up, I'll raise the back of the car, squat it down on the dyno a little better. See if we can't actually determine what the horsepower is on high boost. But we know that over 600 wheel torque, that's enough. <laughs> that's why we actually dialed it back from 19 to 18 PSI and that's what gave us that number. Because uh, 19 PSI just started to be the limit of the fuel system for this. So that's really good to know for factory lines and ethanol. Around 600 horsepower, that's incredible. So for everyone who tells you you can't do that, factory hard lines. Guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging, thanks for watching. Thanks for doing all those things. See you on the next one.